Hello everyone, my name is Matt from the Life Science Dean's Advisory Board, and today I'll be covering some of the most common tips and tricks for ensuring that your enrollment at UCLA goes smoothly. There are going to be several tools that I will only be able to briefly mention during the video, so if you'd like to learn more about these tools, please let me know in the comments, and I'll make a specific video just for those tools. I want to preface this video by saying it is extremely important for you to do this preparation before orientation if you are a new student. You will not be given anywhere near enough time to prepare properly for enrollment during orientation. However, if you're familiar with the process and want to skip to specific parts of the video, I have separated this video into sections for each topic so that you can drag and drop and try to find different places in the video. So as you can see, this video is separated into two sections. In this first section, we will be going over preparation. So I'll show you how to check when your enrollment appointment is. We'll talk about some tips and tricks about determining how many units you should be taking. And then we'll go over Bruin Walk and then some counseling resources. And finally, we'll be talking about some course requirements resources. And then in the second section of the video, we'll be going through the actual class planning and enrollment section. So this will be more actually navigating through my UCLA, we'll talk about a My UCLA course plan or run through, and we'll also talk about some more specific tips and tricks to have a successful enrollment process. So like I mentioned, the first thing that you'll need to check is when your first and second enrollment appointments are. Both of your enrollment appointments, or as I like to call it, enrollment passes, will be during your orientation if you are a new student. But if you're a current student, the main factors determining your priority are how many units you have taken, if you are in or are in the military, if you are an athlete, and if you have a disability. For the first enrollment pass, you'll be allowed to enroll in 10 units worth of courses. The best strategy is to use this enrollment for highly desirable courses or the courses that are required for you to graduate. Remember that UCLA has a lot of students and most everyone does not get their first choice in courses. This is why I will show you how to plan several alternative courses to make sure that you are prepared for the worst case scenario. Because as I like to say, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. So for the second enrollment, you can enroll in a maximum of 21 units per quarter. You would have to petition to enroll in more units than this. All right, so now with all this information in mind, let's actually go to My UCLA and check when our enrollment appointment is. So to do that, you're gonna to go to myucla.edu and then you're gonna click the sign in box on the far right and then you're gonna sign in. Okay, so now once we're signed in, we can see that we're on the main page. We'll go up to the very top where it says classes and then under plan and enroll, we're gonna click on enrollment appointments. Once this page loads, we'll be on the enrollment appointments page, and here you'll have all the information you need about your enrollment appointments. So in the top right box here, you can see where you can click and see all your enrollment appointments that you've had in the past and the one that you're having in your present. So I'm gonna go with fall 2021. Then you can see your pass first and second, when it begins, when it ends, the amount of units you have a maximum amount of for that enrollment session, how many units you have left if you've enrolled in some, and then the status for that pass, and then how much time you have remaining for that pass. And this goes for your first and second. Mine's gonna look different because I've already enrolled for the fall, and so that's why there's gonna be some discrepancy. Also keep in mind that I am a senior, and so you can read more about your class levels here. Also, you can see that when you were assigned for your enrollment appointment and how many units you have eligible, and that's why you got in a certain area. And then you can read more about enrollment appointments at this link here. So some general advice for considering how many units that you'll take per quarter at UCLA is that you should be advised that to put yourself in the best position to succeed in your courses, you should expect that the amount of time that you'll spend on academics is about three times the amount of credit hours, otherwise known as units, that you are taking. For example, be prepared to set aside about 15 hours a week for one five unit course. This includes lecture, discussion, homework, and study time to be successful at UCLA. Obviously this varies by professor, but Keep this in mind. So if you enroll in 12 units for a quarter, expect to spend about 36 hours per week on academics. So this will fluctuate, but this is about an appropriate number. For someone who is working to put themselves through school, or for someone who wants to be heavily involved in UCLA extracurriculars or something similar, I recommend keeping yourself below 15 units per quarter, especially if you are a new student. You can obviously ramp this up as you feel more comfortable with the UCLA workload. Another resource that you can utilize when preparing your class schedule would be Bruinwalk. For those of you who are familiar with Rate My Professor, Bruinwalk is similar, but it is specifically for UCLA. 
RuneWalk has great distributions from previous classes, ratings, and reviews of most professors, but be careful because sometimes reviews can be misleading. However, if there is a great distribution, that is likely the better determination for how rigorous a professor is. Also, read the comments carefully because, for example, some professors are tougher than others, but the tougher professors might be better at preparing you for a standardized test such as the MCAT or LSAT. So a bad rating or grade distribution of a professor might not be the end of the story for that professor. The next trick would be to download the Chrome extension for Bruin Walk so that you can see these ratings and the grade distribution on your My UCLA Class Planner and have an accessible link to the professor's Bruin Walk page. Once you're at the Chrome Web Store, you're just going to click download where for mine it says remove from Chrome. The next resource I'm going to go over is people. So before starting to plan for enrollment, talk to friends and family that have gone or are going to a UC. Also seek guidance from a counselor from your high school or transfer counselor from your previous college. Or if you're a current student, set up an appointment with your department counselor on My UCLA. So if you are currently a UCLA student and you'd like to set up an appointment with your department academic counselor, one way to do this would be to go to Google, type in the name of the department that you're in, and then counseling at UCLA, and then the first link will likely be the website that you want to go to, and then you'll follow a couple of steps from there to set up an appointment. There are methods to do this on My UCLA depending on the department. However, this is a more robust method of doing it for any type of department, and you'll likely be able to find your way to set up an appointment. If you are a transfer student, one tool that you can utilize is assist.org to check and see where you stand with the prerequisites for your major. This will likely be the tool that your counselors will utilize when planning to transfer to a different school like UCLA. So to utilize assist.org, you go to the website and then you put UCLA as the school you are going to and then put your school in the school you are coming from. Let me know in the comments if you want a full walkthrough of assist. You can check any major that UCLA offers using assist. However, if you are a current UCLA student, transfer or freshman, doesn't matter, you have the benefit of using the DARS UCLA page to find the same information. And for you to access your DARS, you would go to My UCLA, you'd sign in, and then once you've signed in, you're gonna go to Academics, Degree Progress slash Audit Report, you're gonna click on that, and then you're gonna continue to DARS, and then once you're at this page, this is where previous audits would be, so you are gonna to go to run an audit for a new one if you haven't in the past. And then you're gonna run selected program if you want to change your major, uh, change your catalog year, change or add a minor, change majors. Like this is where you get a whole bunch of new information. However, if you wanna learn more about your current program, what you're currently doing, you can press run current programs and then press run audit. This'll take a couple of minutes and then once it's done, it'll pop up here. And then you can go to view audit. And then once the audit has shown up, it'll show you a bunch of information about you. And then it'll show you the major that you're in and then the specialization that you're in. And if you scroll down, there's a lot more information that is very useful to determining what classes that you'll need to take. If you wanna learn more about your DARS, please let me know down in the comments. One last preparation tool that you can utilize when planning which classes that you're going to take is the LSSA website. On the LSSA website, you can go to Academic Resources and check out the four-year plans. There are four-year plans for each major in the life sciences, and we are currently working on developing two-year plans for transfer students and updating all the plans in general. So now we're on to the second half of the video where I will be doing a full walkthrough of my UCLA class planner. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna sign in and then go to the classes tab. And then under classes tab, you will be going to the class planner. When trying to get to this page at the very beginning of your enrollment pass, the page might freeze. So you might wanna to try to reload or completely exit your browser and try to come back because a lot of people will be coming on to the My UCLA Class Planner at the same time and the system may overload. So please be careful and look out for that. A suggestion for some classes that you should take during your first quarter at UCLA would be some of the university studies courses that help you prepare for the rigor at UCLA. 
And so there is the University Studies 10A and 10D. 10A is for first and second year students, 10D is for transfers. And there's also a life science specific course. And so a quick run through of how to find courses at, through the class planner would be to search by subject area. You can have a future course plan or try any of these other advanced settings on your own time. However, we're just going to stick to the subject area search for now. So what you're going to do is you're going to type in life sciences, but you could type in any subject if you're looking for something specific. Same thing with the courses. You, if you know something in advance, then you can type it in. But you could also just scroll through and find a course that you're interested in. The life science 107 course is a prerequisite for many upper division courses. So taking that as soon as possible would be beneficial. Same thing with Life Sciences 110. It's a career exploration in life sciences, and it'll give you an idea of something that you'd want to do as a career, so you could guide your classes in the future towards what you want to do. However, for these desirable courses, you're going to need some alternatives just to make sure that you're actually taking something that you're interested in during each quarter. And so speaking of which, you're going to, once you have a class that you would like to enroll in, say 7A, and when you're planning, you'd go to select the course that's open, and then you would find another discussion that's open if that course requires a discussion. And then you would add as class one as an alternative if you already have classes in there, or you can add as a new course if you have an available spot. However, I've already went through, and so I don't have any available spots yet, so I'd have to have it as an enrollment or as an alternative. And so here you can see what I have currently planned. So here's the 10A course, the 10D course, and likely if you're gonna be coming in as a freshman, you're gonna be having to take the seven series, which starts with 7A. And if you're a transfer, you're gonna be starting with whatever is good for your specific major, whether it's MIMG 101, uh, MC, uh, or most courses also require Life Science 107, which is genetics. And so you'd have to just uh, take a look at the preparations tools that are in the beginning of the video to find out which courses you should be taking specifically for your major during the first quarter. And then you should also have some courses that are just for fun. So biomedical research, science in your time. And then if you make some alternative courses, like I showed you just previously, you can click here and it'll show the alternates for that course. And so one other thing that you need to look out for are when final exams are. And so you can see right here, it says Monday, December 6th, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And then for communications, it's Monday, December 6th at 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So this would be on your own discretion to see if you'd want to take a final exam on the same day as other exams, but also be very careful because sometimes exams are on the exact same time. So those two courses, you're going to have to pick one or the other because professors rarely give exceptions for the final exam. And then if, there's a fi uh, if the final exam is listed as none listed, then I would highly suggest getting in contact with your professor. Maybe they're doing some type of project instead of an exact final exam, or if it's over several days, some professors do it that way. But make sure you get in contact and make sure that you don't have any conflicts regarding the final exam. And then another thing is, I went through the Bruinwalk ratings before and how to get the Bruinwalk Chrome extension. So I am in Chrome, and as you can see on the far right here, I have this 3.3 grade for the professor in the Life Science 7A series. I can see their overall grade, easiness, workload, clarity, and helpfulness. And I can even see a grade distribution for this professor. And if I click on this link, it'll take me straight to their Bruinwalk page, and I can get more in depth knowledge of this professor, look at the reviews, and that's what you can do that for almost any professor. Some of them don't have Bruin Walk ratings. However, in general, there are a lot of professors do if they've been at UCLA for a while. And so that's another thing to look out for. And for when you're preparing before your enrollment, like I said, a lot of people are coming in hot and heavy for trying to get the classes that you want. So I would highly suggest having at least three alternates for the main classes that you'd want to take. And so that would just be going through, searching by subject area, scrolling through here, going and using the preparation tools that I mentioned earlier to find the classes that you need to take or want to take, and then putting them in one after the other for the alternates. And then you can also see on a calendar grid what they're going what your class schedule is going to look like and so this is what it would look like if they overlap so you want to make sure you're careful with that you can check your alternates how they would affect your schedule 
And then one last thing I want to go over is if you click one of these links here, whether it's a lecture or discussion, you click here and it takes you to more information about that class specifically. And so you can see whether it's closed, if there's a wait list, uh, the instructors, you can see the final exam information, enrollment information, sometimes there are restrictions for freshmen, transfer, or major specific. And then you can see whether the course is impacted. Those courses have different uh, regulations and deadlines, so be careful with that. You can get a full description about the class and what they're going to be doing, what you'd expect in a full quarter, and whether it's letter grading or pass, no pass. And so that's just about everything you need from this class detail. You can also go to the class website and get the professor's email if you need to sign up for a PTE number, which you would need if you are on the wait list or if the class is completely closed and you still really want to get into the class. So one last thing that you can do if you utilize Apple Calendar, Google Calendar, or some other third-party calendar software for keeping track of your day-to-day, -day, you can go to Campus Life Calendar and then once this page loads, you can go to the download section, summer sessions, whatever quarter that you'd want. And then you can click download and it will give you a file for downloading the calendar for that entire quarter. And you can upload that into your Google or Apple calendar. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something useful. And if you did, please subscribe for more information from the Life Science Dean's Advisory Board. Also, please leave a like and leave some comments below about future videos. There are a lot of tools that I didn't get into depth about and a lot of tools I didn't even touch. So please let me know about tools that you are interested in learning more about. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos.